What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday. I think my voice cracked a little it bit did. there. Everyone hear that? I did. It my did. balls dropped in yeah. the middle of the intro. <laughs> Happy to be here. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. I Wonderful? love Thanksgiving week. Short week. Ah. Get everything done at the beginning and then just do relax, chill out, eat some good food. Everybody knows I love Thanksgiving. It's a great week. Just a reminder, don't do drugs, kids. I have to say that yeah. every single year. My PSA. Don't ruin Thanksgiving. Don't ruin Thanksgiving. Don't do drugs on Thanksgiving because you will end up in your shower with um, you know, somebody having to help you yeah. go from hot to cold and uh, you know, heart attack tests and all that. So just beware. Check, Beware check of what you're the, eating. Uh, dosage in the edibles. Right. If you if you are gonna partake in some drugs this Thanksgiving season, check the dosage. I know yeah. I am. Don't let your sister Okay. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> okay, hey, big whoa. Just take it easy, man. Uh if your sister says cool guy over there, hey, take no, this I just, edible. I need to to be able to eat enough on, on Thanksgiving. Otherwise I won't be hungry. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, well, a, that's, sad. A, problem. that's a sad Let's unpack that at yeah, a different we, date. That, we do not have time uh, to unpack Noah's terrible eat <laughs> bad eating habits. If your sister says, Hey, take this edible, say, Hey sis, how much? Don't just chomp on it and then yeah. carry on with your night because you will end up having a heart attack at your Thanksgiving table and you will ruin Thanksgiving and your all your family members will leave yeah. and your parents will have to assure them that it wasn't an overdose. So, yeah, just don't do Terrifying that. Terrifying Thanksgiving. But I'm really excited for Thanksgiving this year because this is my first year that I'm cooking things for Thanksgiving. Uh, usually just help my mom like with whatever she needs yeah usually thanksgiving's at my house and it is at my house again this year but this time i will be partaking in making my own dishes as well for the family and also for marty's family because we both of our families are on long island yeah so that makes it easy to go to both houses on holidays which i think is so funny like you're having two thanksgiving dinners i will be having two thanksgiving dinners but it works out because my family does it earlier in the day like we eat around like 3 p.m yeah but you're gonna be so stuffed where i think his fam family eats a little later on in the day so it's good we'll just go to my house then we'll go to his house it's perfect, both on Long Island. What are you making? I am making, so the other night I made these mini, I would call them mini chicken pot pies. I've never had chicken pot pie before or made them, so I don't know. It's like the soup that I made, but like in a mini like biscuit cooked. Uh -huh. Oh my God, it was so delightful. A little gravy on top. And I thought, hmm, these would be perfect for like a little Thanksgiving appetizer. Yeah. Uh, so I told my parents and I showed them pictures of what I made and they were like, wow, those look really good. You should make them for an appetizer for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to make my coffee crumb cake muffins for oh, those, dessert yeah. for both families. That was so, a good call. <laughs> bless, bless you. you. Those were very good. So I'm excited because I've never made anything good things. by myself for thanksgiving and so we'll see the reaction from the crowd yeah i'm not quite sure what my thanksgiving meal is going to be looking like this year it's i'm it's only uh my parents and my sister because we're gonna be in florida mm -hmm. my mom was like you want dad to make turkey or should we go out so i don't i don't really, i don't think we'll be shelling out a big a big meal i don't hate the idea year. of going out to dinner for thanksgiving yeah when it's only the four of us yeah. like it's not but would you go out and have like a thanksgiving meal yeah, at a restaurant? yeah yeah i've done that before one year with my family and restaurants years ago. do that. Yeah, they do. Years ago, we did it at a restaurant one time. Yeah. Which everyone was like, all right. Boston Market. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was like, cool. All right. We yeah, can, yeah. Nobody needs to clean up. Whatever. It was fine. Yeah. So I think my dad is making turkey, but I just, mm -hmm. you know, probably won't be as extravagant with all the sides when it's for people. Hey, a no pressure Thanksgiving. Is very, nice. very low key Thanksgiving. Yeah. Very low key. But I'm excited to get to, to, get to, uh, to Florida. Uh, I'm jealous yeah. and I'm excited because I'm, I'm going to Florida in December and then again in January, yeah, which we're, I we're, just can't we're, wait. Um, we're trying to clock some hours. Yeah. Me and Fran are- For sure. Everybody knows, well, if you, if you haven't been listening, then you don't know, but if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that Fran and I have houses our 30 parents, minutes away from each other in yeah, Florida. Yeah, our parents live quite close to each and other. And so Might we're going to get go down there. next year. Blink, blink. Oh yeah, yeah. We are trying. And also we're trying to get to Florida for some- some shows as well. I, yeah. I think I uh I think I may have gotten Joe to agree to go to Universal for a day oh, on my shit. way from the wedding. We have a wedding that's north in January and we have to go right past Orlando mm -hmm. to drive to to my parents' house. 
And I was like, you know, we do have to drive right past it mm -hmm. on the way. <laughs> you definitely should make a stop. And I think I may have done some convincing. <laughs> you should take a stop and then drive back home at night. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not staying overnight, mm -hmm. not doing anything crazy. I said, just one day. I've one, done that one afternoon. Come from, on. Uh, from where we are and exactly it's, it's not it's not bad exactly i think um i think i i think i i planted the seed so we'll we'll, Good. we'll see what happens but i'm excited about it and um yeah i'm, I'm just i'm it got very cold here very quickly and i'm ready to go i like it for Except it to be for warm the fact again that you can't run it is so cold i mean it's cold it's not so cold it's, it's like 30 th degrees that's cold that's but really it's cold 27 when i woke up this <laughs> morning. i would say so cold is like mm, under 10. You're right? crazy. Well, I mean, person. Syracuse. Like, your just... your temperature runs differently. No, it's just like. What's your Thanksgiving looking like this week? Uh, just the usual. Just me and the the grandparents. Very nice. And my family, not just me and my grandparents. Yeah. But uh, on Wednesday night, my mom or some of one of our cousins is having like a bar mitzvah in New York City. I never go to these things because I'm like, I don't know anyone there. I don't want to go. But my mom's like, Oh, you should come. And Wednesday then I'll... night before Thanksgiving. Yeah, such a bad night. That is bad. But she's like going to the city, so she's like, "Oh, you could go with me, and then we, I'll just drive you home." Yeah, and I might just go for free Eve? drinks. You know yeah. what I think is awful? People who have weddings the day after Thanksgiving, and I know that's insane. I know somebody who, that who that's happening to, and oh god, prayers that up. Is tough. That's like the worst possible. Like that and Chris. Like that'd that be like, may be one of the worst holiday wedding choices. Mm -hmm. But why would yeah. you have any holiday wedding? That's just so like inconsiderate no, to other people. No, I mean, look, sometimes it works just like. But then sometimes like, it works in people's schedules. Sometimes, um, because people already like, have off. People already have off. Sometimes if the bride and groom like have a hard time with their jobs, like that works for I them. I know, but then it's like, all right, so monetary all the people reasons. Going sometimes to our they wedding, give you a deal. Don't yeah. get a, have their own holiday this year. But that's basically <laughs> well, what you're doing. It's awful. Will you be? participating in any thanksgiving eve activities i was gonna ask that too i want to and now i'm like if i'm going to this bar yeah. i can't no just no. like friends no. in town nope i asked my friends what they were doing one of them's going to billy joel nice uh <laughs> so whatever and then i have no interest in going into yeah. to a bar in uh where i used to go what out. about your other half oh no We'll, no. we'll just be hanging out with my family. Your other half. Well, I think we might go to dinner with like my brother and his fiance yeah. or something. Yeah. Just something casual. Um, I would be. I would normally partake in something. However, my I don't live it. My parents don't live there anymore, so it's not really yeah. possible for me. It would uh, be a real inconvenience. Slash, I'll be in Florida anyway. I'll be honest, so. and I'm not saying this in like a. I hope this doesn't come across the wrong way, but the couple of times that I've been out on Long Island around people that I have gone to school with or whatever have always been like people have been really rude mm. you know yeah not my friends specifically but people have been just rude in general because they they think that I think I'm cool but I don't yeah. you know what I'm saying so yeah. they just like automatically act oh you think you know and I'm like no yeah you know so I just Avoid. I haven't done like a good one in a couple of years, but it is always fun. You oh, you always get into some kind of hilarious situation, mischief. some kind of mischief. I love. I think it's a great. It's a <clears throat> like if you're if if you're like in your early twenties, I think it's phenomenal. Like right <laughs> I, think I just have like bad more. memories on Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah. Like there's one Thanksgiving Eve that I think is. It was just awful. I won't even tell the story. But after that, like, I'm I'm good on staying in. Yeah. So, Super <laughs> fair. I just so try to, like, hang with my own friends. I'm not trying to, like, go have a reunion with my high school. Yeah, well, sometimes yeah. it's funny when you do, when well, you go with your own friends to where know, everybody else is. And then you everyone. And then you, and then you get to, you know, hang out with your friends and look around and judge everybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see Wait, what, friend, isn't your 10-year reunion? See what everybody else is doing. Wouldn't that be this my year? High school? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going? Mm, no. <laughs> Interesting. No. Yeah, I've always said I'm never going to go 
and then mine is next year. And I'm I don't like, even know if I want to go. Like I don't, I don't get the emails. Neither I don't know. Do what I. Mine I don't even, know how. I don't know what mine even is. There was a five. Also, don't about. forget, mine. I graduated with a class of fifty girls. So like, oh, I'm not. It's uh, not exactly a like our ten year reunion. I think they just do it like at the school, and it's like yeah. like it's not like a big to do. <laughs> I yeah. saw a couple of people go to my five year reunion, which I think was held last yeah. year. Well, it was held later because of yeah. COVID. I'm pretty sure. And I was like, "Oh fuck! They're at the <laughs> they're at the five year reunion. Like, I didn't it, even it, it hear looked about my it looked like year. it was lacking." Yeah, I, of course. Like, it's just very typical of my two friends who I who I love, but they are both in like different high schools. But they are planning their ten year reunions, and they both have said it's been a struggle to get people to to commit to uh, attend slash well, like depends, RSVP yeah. and go have these bars. Mm-hmm. So b- both of them have been stressed about it. They're like, why the fuck did we agree to be the ones to try and organize this? So That seems like a terrible job. Why would you ever want to do that? Yeah. Back on... You back- know, if you're like... You say- you're like class president of your class but like and shit. 10 and they years like, ago. Yeah, but that's... They, it goes... It lands it's, in your plate to try job. and to try and plan it's these like things. It's like being on the Supreme Court. You're, yeah, you're just, doing it for life. Back to the Thanksgiving Eve uh, conversation. I also don't like being hung over on thanksgiving fair because if That's my fair. stomach's not right for the meal that i'm about to partake in i'm gonna be very upset yeah yeah so that's also been my thing yeah where i'm like i don't i get bad hangovers mm-hmm. i don't want to be hung over on thanksgiving especially when i'm doing two thanksgivings yeah you know what i mean <laughs> like that's a marathon yeah i agree Do that's you think fair that leftovers is better than the actual meal like sitting there. I don't think I that do. it no. tastes better. I think that when no one's around and like, you can like, really like, like go in on that your plate. night, it's like yeah. midnight. Right. And you're, and like, you're like, fuck, I'm about to go in. Yeah. And something about it being cold, like, oh. you know, maybe like, I like it cold. No. 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 But I'm I not can judging never, you, but I'm just not. never hungry at the meal. Like, I never finish my plate at the meal. This is a you This problem. is a you problem. Yes. <laughs> you know? This is, is just a you thing in general. The Thanksgiving. With lunch every day. You know? We're just yeah, eating. And, this is just yeah. you. Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, like cold. Cold turkey? Oh, so good. <laughs> no. Yum. Cold, cold turkey. stuffing, cold mashed potatoes. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm, a, I'm just a big cold. I mean, I like warm Do you like your pizza potatoes. cold? Yes, I love my Like pizza you would cold. rather have cold mashed potatoes and stuffing over warm mashed potatoes and stuffing? No, no. Yeah, not mashed potatoes. I wouldn't rather, but I do enjoy it being mm. cold. It's a different type of taste. You know what I kind of like? Cold penny alla vodka. Remember when I didn't know what that was? Yeah, yeah. crazy. I wasn't gonna bring that up, but <laughs> cold penny alla vodka. Sometimes yeah, sometimes that does, you get a little. Yeah. I would say a in. lot of things cold. It's just like a different meal. And it, it is. It's, it's good. But I almost feel like when I have but something, it's always better warm. I almost always. feel like when I have something yeah. cold. I almost don't even count like it Chinese food. as if I've had it as a meal. Right. Like, I'll eat the Chinese food cold, and I'm like, all right, now let me have some warmed up, because that didn't count. <laughs> like, I'll get some bites in cold, and then I'm like, let me warm it up and have my real meal. I'm also lazy enough that I just don't want to heat yeah, it up. I think that's where oh, this, geez, this is coming Christ. from. <laughs> no, but I really do like it cold. But I'm also like, eh. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's what really is it, cold t- it takes a lot of energy to Cold put- pizza and Gatorade? Is that Wiz Khalifa? Uh, frozen... Pizza. Frozen pizza? That's you mean the, you mean that's Mac lyric? Miller. Oh. Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah, that's a Mac Miller song. Is it? Cool Fro Frozen Frozen Pizza Fro what is it? Kool Aid. Kool Aid and Frozen Pizza. Yeah, cool <laughs> Kool Aid and Frozen Pizza. Kool Aid and really, Frozen really worked through that one. <laughs> uh yeah. You threw me off with saying that, Wiz Wanna know why I confused Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller? Because I once saw Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller in concert together. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Not that that makes sense why I'd confuse the two songs, but maybe it does a little bit. They but I also together. do think Wiz Khalifa mentions cold pizza. I'll have to find that at a later date. It's a popular item. Yeah, it is. Well, I hope everyone's gearing up for a good week, whether you're traveling, safe travels home, and all of those things, and enjoy the time. We will have an episode Wednesday paradise finale all these things are happening uh but we'll be off friday and back 
a little later on Monday. But we do have a vlog coming out on Friday. Yes. To fill your appetite for, for some new no. merch. Are we going to put that on Friday or Thursday night? It'll be Thursday night into Friday. It'll technically, it'll technically be Friday. It'll technically be Friday okay. because Black Friday starts at midnight yep. on Thursday, yeah. which is actually technically Friday. Yep. But we will have a vlog and it's behind the scenes of our photo shoot and all that stuff. But it's funny. It's not like we just filmed <laughs> behind the scenes. Like there's some good, good stuff in there. So... You'll get a little behind the scenes look at what we do at our job every day. <laughs> let us know if you want more of it. Yeah, let us know if you want some more behind the scenes, but that'll fill your appetite for no podcast. There'll be a vlog on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. And the episodes have been going out early in the morning. So if you want to listen to the podcast, or I mean, watch the podcast on YouTube, you can look forward to that as well. Make sure you subscribe. And I think that's really it. I yeah. did absolutely nothing this weekend. I didn't step outside from Thursday to Sunday, and I enjoyed every minute oh, of the, it. Oh, the um, I just will just I'm gonna mention it so fast. The American Music Awards were last night. Could not have paid one attention to anything. I, I was having so only, over awards like, shows. Nothing on the red carpet excited me. Nothing I saw. Like even a lot of times, sometimes I'll see, when I'm not watching, I'll see clips on social and be like. Oh, that's cool. Like, maybe I should have watched. Didn't have one moment like that. The only, uh, I, I mean, I'm intrigued by the Taylor Swift situation. Like, the, I'm you know, she was winning, a, well, she won awards. That's why she was no, there. I know, but I feel like she and, that. Well, she won, like, multiple awards. So I'm they sure tell they, them they told them beforehand. No, and I also, know. Award shows are AMAs such are a like, fucking yeah, scam. And, no, I know, but, yeah. like, AMAs. Like, yeah. you're above that. And Taylor. she. No, but I think it's like all part of her plan. She, you know, her outfit was like Speak Now. She wore her hair like she did in the Speak Now era. So I think it Everything was all. Everything has to be a goddamn. It was all a thing. And, with her. Um, <laughs> and Pink, the, Pink sang Olivia Newton John. It was beautiful. That was the only thing that I saw that I was like, that's wonderful. I like I Pink. I enjoyed that. That was, it was stunning. She also participated in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony which aired on hbo this weekend that was beyond entertaining i'd watch that ten thousand times before i watched the amas yeah I, i'm just over award shows i nothing does it for me anymore well they're, they're just not bringing out the big dogs the no AMAs and the big were, dogs I mean, don't feel like they gotta go no i mean taylor swift is there like. yeah but taylor like didn't she like wasn't really part of the carpet she showed up to t get her awards and then she took pictures with all of her awards and that was yeah. it <laughs> classic taylor classic all right let's get into today's topics we're going to be talking about harry styles and olivia wilde splitting up sk it's and over. raven from love is blind it's over times also too. dunzo dunzo i said Dun after dunzo, I, I watched said. <laughs> laguna beach all weekend long because it's on netflix mm. and quite a rewatch let me tell you and uh, we are also going to be talking about Taylor Swift's statement about Ticketmaster and then we're, Ticketmaster. We're closing that. Saga. We're closing the chapter on Taylor Swift and Ticketmaster. Yeah. And we have a great game of trivia and an amazing interview with Glenn Powell, who we Phenomenal. adore. He's always fun, and we can't wait to have him. Yeah. Talk about movie stars. In that studio. guy's a movie star. He is becoming a movie yeah. star. I mean, he just looks like a movie star. Yeah, he looks yeah. like a movie star. He's a movie star, in and my he book. is becoming like a true movie star. Yeah, that sounds rude, but it's just because he's more. He's getting more. You know, I mean, he was in one of the biggest. Yeah, movies of yeah, all no, time. that's what I'm saying. He's yeah. becoming a movie star. I'm have I'm I think he I'm is. giving him movie star. Yeah. Title. I wouldn't say. I mean, he's not a list, but he's movie he's star. a movie star for sure. Let's get into it. <laughs> starting off with Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde. We've been talking about proper wild lately on this podcast. We have a box here right next to us. I got the peach mango, which is my favorite flavor. I think proper wild is perfect and awesome to use as a way to get through your day, your weeks, your nights. It gives you that little energy boost that you need in your life. And it's all clean, all day energy. It's vegan. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. It's dairy free. Um, there's no preservatives. There's no chemicals that you, you would usually find in an energy drink. And also it's a little shot. So it really makes it easy for you to just take the quick shot and get on your day. Sometimes Sometimes, um, you know, a long, 
a big energy drink. You're going to have to finish that energy drink. And then it takes a little while before you start feeling that feeling. This gives it to you right away with no jitters. You know, sometimes you have an energy drink or whatever it is, you get jittery. This takes away all of that. It's clean all day energy. Proper Wild. We love using Proper Wild to get our Friday energy for the week. Monday, we love starting our week with this. It's 100% plant-based as well. So go to properwild.com slash barstool and you'll get 30% off your first order. Once again, that's properwild.com slash barstool for 30% off your first order. If you're looking for a way to get through your day, your week, your night, whatever it is, look no further than Proper Wild. The news broke this past weekend, Friday night. They knew what they were doing when they put it out on Friday night. night. 6 p.m. Right. (laughs) They thought that we weren't going to talk about it Monday morning. Yeah. They were wrong. Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde allegedly taking a break, which I would like to call their breaking up because, you know, Harry's about to go on this world tour. He's going to be traveling to different countries. I yeah. don't think uh, it's sustainable for Olivia to be traveling to those countries with Harry. She no. has kids. Jason Sudeikis would lose his fucking mind if she was traveling to all these different countries and so that's it for them i i think it's that's it for them in general like i think the time has come they're wrapping a little bow on it and it's done for olivia and harry i think a lot of drama has happened i think that harry will always respect olivia i think olivia will always respect harry but i think as a relationship their time has come yeah the all the reports have been saying is like a very amicable decision that the timing is just, you know, like you said, it just ran its course. The timing has come where he's going to be gone. She needs to be with the kids. Jason D- Sudeikis would not be okay with her running around the entire country, a country, the world, with her bringing the kids to different shows. People were freaking out because she was literally at a show, like, on Tuesday or Wednesday. With and her kids, right? That, with, yeah, with her kids. People were like, oh, fare, farewell show. Yeah. Um, kids, say goodbye. Yeah, kids, say goodbye to, say goodbye to Daddy, Daddy Harry. Harry. <laughs> say goodbye to Harry. Um, this is it for you guys. <laughs> but, I mean, at this point, they'll probably just stay friends. Also, the World Cup is Yeah, the on, World so. Cup is on. The, England's playing. Troops here. It's over. It kind of sounds like there's a brawl in the hallway. Yeah, it does. Well, anyway... <laughs> I do uh I do think that like this taking a break for me like he's going to be touring for another year. <laughs> That's just a breakup. Mm. It's just done. I do like to think Harry and Jason Let's be honest. get back together. If I mean, you want, if he Jason? wanted to stay no, with her, no. they'd be together. It's not because he's going on tour or anything. It's, right. it's if you, because if you, he broke up with her. If you truly... <laughs> That's what happened. And here's the thing. When people say a breakup is mutual, no, it's, no. no. It's no. not. There is somebody you who think- wants to break up more and then the other person agrees. A mutual <laughs> yeah, breakup... You think somebody Olivia's has like, to bring hey, it, just somebody has to bring it up. This isn't going to work anymore. Like, no. Harry's like, it's over. But here's the thing. Mu- breakups can be quote unquote mutual, but there's somebody who brought it up. You know what I mean? Like, there's somebody yeah. who brought up the breakup, and then the other person agrees. I, mean, I, I think it's unfair to just say that Air Harry dumped her. I think that's unfair, Noah. I, it I, might be unfair, but that's, I think that's that, my belief. But why are you saying it's unfair for him to say that when I said that Pete broke up with Kim? You didn't say it was unfair for me to say that about Pete and Kim. Because I That's think, just his guess, is that Harry well, broke up with Olivia. I think that's the most probable thing that happened. I didn't really agree with you on that either. No, you don't have to agree, but yeah. to say it's unfair for him to say that, like it's just a guess. It's you know, I it could be unfair. Like... I just know it's coming from a place of malice towards Olivia from <laughs> Noah. Uh, it, even if it is, it doesn't is. matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a guess. It's just like it's Harry Styles. She's not leaving him unless. Well, she has children, <laughs> and I know, which are I know. her number one priority. So if yeah, she can't, now like, that Harry isn't in her life, she has to. She can't just like tour the entire world either and leave way her kids at home sorry my voice cracked again <laughs> either way either i think way i i think that when somebody says a breakup is mutual there is one person who brings it up and the other person might go oh they might agree but they're not the one who yeah, wanted like, the breakup wait, the most. someone always has five, to initiate it right but, exactly someone has to initiate it like you but can sometimes agree both but like people are afraid like sometimes both people have the feeling 
They just don't want to be the one to initiate it. And then when someone does initiate it, sometimes the other person is relieved. I've, I mean, I, yeah. I'm just coming from not my own personal experience, but like my, I've seen it, my friends go through that where they just don't want to be the one to, to like do it. to do it. And, and then, then the other person does it, and they're like, oh, okay, right. <laughs> but they wanted it too, <laughs> right? That is true. But I, I would feel like in most cases when it's mutual, there is one person who wanted it a little bit more. Yeah, and I'm sure like. They're not, probably not thrilled about the timing, but that's just the way it is. Maybe down the line things will change, but at this point, it's taking a turn. I I was going to say that I do like the. Uh, I, I'm gonna jump on the narrative of like interesting timing of Harry and Kendall and Kylie going to one of his, to to one of Harry's shows. Kendall, Ky Haley, and they, Kylie. I am not jumping onto Devin that Booker. theory because she's dating Devin Booker. I. Don't care. I feel like maybe they're uh, Kendall That'd be and sick if she just threw Kendall it. and Devin. I feel like are so hot and cold that you never know. You never know where those two could be in their relationship. He's back playing. The season started up again. He's traveling a lot. They're not spending a lot of time together. But Harry's about to go across the world. Yeah. So she's got time. She's got but, nothing to tie her down. Awesome. But you're. But <laughs> she's I'm, got time. That means that she can also have time to visit Devin Booker. Then yeah. But yeah, she but doesn't. What's, what's cooler? Yeah, exactly. Like go see going Devin to Booker Japan play, with just, Harry. Go watch the Phoenix Suns <laughs> regular season games, or go to Japan with Harry Styles. I'm yeah. not buying into the Harry and Kendall. Uh, That'd be awesome. I'm not buying into. I it. would love. I would love. I think that I would root for. I it, would but love I'm not for that to it. be back to being a thing. I feel like they were very underrated when they these, were together because Harry was not as famous. These shows, though, I've seen people joke about it, are going to be like Harry Styles being single on stage. These girls are going to be. Insane. Oh, everyone's gonna think they got a shot. No, but like they already did, yeah. and, and now it's <laughs> they like he's actually did. single. Yeah. He's and gonna sometimes he's gonna be, these, yeah, he is gonna need crowds, security, extra these, security. Yeah, these international crowds are crazy. Yeah. Like when did he goes see, to when he goes to South America. Did you see Bad Bunny that video? Of him? Like yeah, him kissing the South. Yeah, the South America crowds are wild. Like when you, I remember watching like documentaries and stuff of like, or even like the Jonas Brothers would. Justin Bieber would talk about going to shows in South America, Brazil, Argentina. Like, come to Brazil! Fans That's what they always say. <laughs> fa just <laughs> freaking out, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people camped out outside their hotels, chasing their cars down, like you know, crazy shit. Because they don't go there that often, so when they do, people freak out. I won't say we made it until somebody comments on our post, come to Brazil. It, that has ha <laughs> That has happened before. Um, but it's been my friend Claire because that's always right. been a joke. <laughs> but the comments are there. <laughs> right. If if we make if we make it, it means that people are commenting. Come to Brazil. I think that yeah, that's it for Harry and Olivia. Like, yeah, that's just about it. It's, it, it hasn't was, been the same ever since New York. It, it hasn't been the same since ever since the Don't Worry Darling press. No. Like I think things. But just, did you guys catch that? Well, ever since New York. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're just used to you making We're those witty jokes. We're just used to very, a lot of puns from I just recent. love using songs. A lot of people, puns from you. When artists break up, it's so fun. You're really nailing it lately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think these two, yeah, it was, it was, it felt calculated in the sense that they probably were having these discussions for a while. Things are probably off after all the crazy drama and everything that happened. And then it's like, ooh, Friday before Thanksgiving week, people are traveling times are a little it's a little calmer friday 6 p.m in the midst of like taylor swift drama and everything else that's happening just like just throw it out now you think jason let out a big fist pump yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when he saw the news he's uh, like fuck yes probably he's i'm sure he's ready to ship harry to timbuktu so <laughs> oh yeah now he's blasting harry styles music like he's yeah. like i love this man i love this song <laughs> he's like let's get this man on his international tour shall we yeah <laughs> come on kids you love the song watermelon yeah. sugar <laughs> yeah yeah sing it with me everybody so <laughs> It's a sign of the times. <laughs> oh, no. All right. All right. Moving no on. More. Moving on. <laughs> no more. You get one per God, segment. It's just... One per segment. Okay. <laughs> that we have to just... we have to cut you off. What about if they're Maroon 5 songs? I feel like I get an unlimited amount of When those. we're talking about Adam Levine, you get unlimited. Okay. <laughs> but besides that, you get one per yeah. segment. <laughs> so Rain think, it in. So think of your next one. <laughs> Quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, that's it. That's all she wrote for these two. The the Harry fans were re rejoicing. <laughs> J Jason's holding like a big meeting in a park yeah. with all the Harry fans. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, man. eHarmony wants you to discover what real connection feels like. Their app helps you highlight more of your personality so you can meet people who like you for you. There's a ton of dating apps and websites at this point, but we all remember eHarmony being the first one to get on that market. Remember, you're sitting home watching TV. You see a commercial for eHarmony. You're like, what's that? Meeting people online? Now it's so common. It's where people meet their significant others, their wives, their boyfriends, whoever it is. They're meeting people on eHarmony and on these dating sites, but sometimes you can feel like your dating profile doesn't truly reflect you. That's where eHarmony comes into play to give you that personality quiz designed to get to the heart of what makes you you so you could show up as your full self and meet people you really connect with. They get to know you better so you can match better and actually meet someone who gets you. You know, it's not based off, oh, you like the way that person looks. Oh, you saw something in their bio. This is personality based as well as, of course, you get to see what they look like, but the personality is there and it's showing with the clever personality quiz and compatibility based approach that takes the guesswork out of trying to be yourself online. If you're ready to move past the swiping grind, eHarmony is the app for people ready to take dating straight to the heart. So start a conversation on eHarmony today and you could start free today if you download the eHarmony app now. Another couple bites the dust. What another the one bites the dust. And another, another one gone, gone another, another one gone, gone another one bites the dust. dust. Hey, something, something. What do you say? <laughs> Another one bites the dust. I have a weird memory of (laughs) this is so off topic, but of uh, my so my brother has this best friend. Oh God! And they've been best friends since my brother was in like pre K. I think he lives around the block from me, and he had a younger brother who was in my grade, so we would all hang out together when we were younger. And I have so curious where this memory stem from that another you- one bites the dust yeah, and okay. i have a very weird memory of me and this kid making up a dance oh i thought you were gonna say making out oh my like- god no 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 we never took that step uh, uh making up making up a dance to another one bites the dust and i have this weird vivid memory you ever just like something comes to your brain yeah. and you can see it i was linking arms and like walking down the stairs like another one bites the dust and then like going our separate ways like dun- I can't. I'm like, I have shivers up my spine, down my spine. All right. Anyways, SK and Raven are done. Over. It's over for SK and Raven. They were together as of this week. And then, boom, something bad happened on TikTok where everything bad happens, where somebody comes out and says, boom, these are the things that happen. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. SK is a lion stealing cheat who's been with another woman mm-hmm. and lying to this woman. And so they were together after Love is Blind was filmed. He told this woman, oh, it was just for show. It's a fake fiance. It's just for money. Like, don't worry about it. While he was still with uh, Raven and yeah. still dating Raven. And uh, it just seems like SK's a two-timer, which we were not expecting from this sweet man who he all played fooled us, all. us and at the reunion, the way he's talking about Raven, my woman's a baddie, yeah. all this stuff. And yet, boom, there was another girl in the shadows that he's been dating all along yeah. and lying to Raven, who I think is going to persevere and thrive in her career and life and Pilates. I, I love Raven. I think she's the best one to come out of this show so far. And also, Bartice needs to shut his mouth because then he's posting he's so something annoying. on Instagram. You're never going to get Raven. You're never going to get no, Raven. I so even, get it through your and head. I don't even think he was doing it from that angle. I think he was doing it to be like, ooh, like SK, not as great as everybody's, you know, like trying to be mm-hmm. like, mm, I, dirty, I'm dirty man. I don't know what this guy was thinking. But clearly, like, if this is the angle he was taking of just getting on the show to help with money and fame and all those things, which, of course, people do. But if that really is how it goes down, he might take the biggest love is blind villain spot from what's his face from season two, who was brutal. Shane. Yeah. uh, No, uh, not Shane. I didn't really pay attention. Shake. Oh, yes. Yes. Sorry, yes. Who was like, oh, uh, would you be able to get on top of my shoulders at a festival? Yeah, and and then he was all about like, oh, you know, everybody's trying to be famous, that whole thing. So 
This happened. Raven stood by SK after there was one TikTok of someone saying that they went on a date in April um, with the guy from Hinge. And then he was actually on Love is Blind. And she posts like DMs from Instagram. And Raven had posted in a video that's now not, you know, been deleted. Like rumors were rumors were fine. That's the man I'm sticking beside him. Like that was first. And then came Hannah Beth Style on TikTok, who posted multiple, many receipts, pictures, messages like everything and it started with her saying when your ex takes you to europe and talks about getting back together but on the trip you find out he has a fiance from a reality show he did on netflix but then he tells you it's all fake and for the money so you say you'll believe him if you get to meet his fake fiance but that never happens and now you're waiting for him to get exposed as the actual villain instead of this phony angel he portrayed himself as she claims that she and sk started dating in 2019 broke up rekindled things on a trip to Ibiza during the summer of 2021, which was after they filmed Love is Blind. Um, Ibiza. Yes. And made a series of photos and screenshots. She Please. asserted that SK told her that he and Raven were just friends. And then Liar! Raven, such a liar. Then Raven deleted all pictures of SK from her Instagram. Um, Fake she ass started, bitch. She started, she started commenting back to people. Somebody commented, dodged a bullet with that one, sis. She's, she sent back the prayer emojis. Someone else said, the way SK is about to get himself jumped, bro. Biggest plot twist ever. She wrote back, literally, LOL. And then they both, SK and Raven. Weird statement. Weird statement. On both of their Instagram Weird stories, statement. they wrote, we are saddened to announce that we have decided to go our separate ways. Due to ongoing legal proceedings surrounding these allegations, we cannot provide additional details and ask that you please respect our privacy during this hard time. Thank you for following our love story and believing in us. This journey has forever shaped our lives and we are so grateful for everyone who has been a part of it. Your love and support means everything. Like, wh- what legal proceedings? So I think it may have something to do with the contract that they signed for the show and what you have to like being say single, that you're single and so like going and telling somebody something else does that mean the show's suing him i think i think it may have something to do with that if i had to take a guess because i could not i could not wrap my head around any other legal proceedings so i think it has to do something with the contract and the show maybe he was with another woman and told and maybe you're not allowed to tell specific people and he told this woman you know yeah I, I'm not sure, but that would be my guess because I don't think that there's any other legal proceedings unless right. he did something, you know, wrong to somebody and he's and he's being sued for that. Yeah. I think that this is a show thing. Yeah. Such a liar. You know what this also made me think of? Remember in the in the pods, he was talking about being on um he was talking about his family and uh, the traditions and his culture and like polygamy being a prominent thing. But then he was like, I don't want that. Like, I want the monogamous <laughs> lifestyle. It's like, you're you're just a lying liar who lies. Like, clearly, maybe you do want the poly- – you're living the polygamous lifestyle. Yeah. You got a whole ass girlfriend and a whole ass fiance. Maybe it's in his blood. And I don't even know, like, fiance. You know, fiance, they didn't actually, like – get married so i don't know what he necessarily called her post breakup like if they just went back to being like girlfriend and boyfriend or if they stuck with the fiance title whatever it is what a bad ending to this relationship i really it's thought it's always the good ones it's I always know. the good it ones really, i really thought like i was like oh these two made the Only right the dis- good die young. oh no it's like <laughs> That one wasn't even yeah, good. Billy Joel. I know it's a I great know, it's but a good that song. One, but that one didn't really fit. That one fit. doesn't really fit. The, SK didn't die. Yeah, you could have done something the with like with cheating or you know any. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. could say they were slow dancing in a burning room. Yeah, yeah. You no, could say yeah. um, next time he cheats, it won't be on Raven. Yeah. She's gonna find another. No, that doesn't work either. I was just thinking of John Mayer song. Yeah, mm-hmm. could have thrown out a classic. Dreaming. Raven's now dreaming with there. a broken heart. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's it's uh it's let's, a tough end. let's do a tough segment end. where we see how long we can go back and forth with, Just song, with titles. song titles <laughs> yeah that would be interesting yeah that actually would be pretty game. hard oh you know what? Well, a little game also another segment i thought of once that i never workshopped to you guys was play a young thug song for uh guests and see if they can decipher the lyrics Interesting. You could do, that. Can't play you could do that for me, and I wouldn't be able to. I yeah, well, I you can't decipher them yeah. for majority. Yeah. yeah, I don't know any of his music. Really, Rob? Uh, I once is, saw him at Rolling Loud. This is totally <laughs> off. <laughs> this is totally off topic. No, and kind of goes back. It was the first, with what one we were of the first Rolling Louds in Miami. Sorry, we're. Excuse me. You don't care about this side conversation. <laughs> do that. Uh, we talked about this over the weekend, but we posted as a joke like a pete davidson harry styles graphic after they broke up and shep had retweeted it this and, and wrote guess i'm an old fucker but i feel like if i walk into a room and these two guys are there looking like this i have zero anxiety about trying to get the girl i mean zero i know their resume is impressive but shrugging emoji strip away the celebrity for a second and consider it the the bravo by betches Instagram account just reposted it mm -hmm. and wrote now Shep and there's like already 200 comments of people being like what is this guy thinking? Listen, <laughs> love our Southern Charm guys but they have some of the biggest heads I've seen. I know, that, it is like, that, so funny. That tweet that Shep did on yeah. the Chicks in the Office tweet. That's what, that's what was, we're just that's what talking about. She literally Jesus just said. <laughs> Why do you think she, I brought him she up? She literally just read that entire thing. I just thing. read the entire <laughs> interaction. I, I, I just, I don't know. I think I was on my phone. Oh my God. Just <laughs> pipe down over there. Pipe, pipe down. Uh, um, uh, all the <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, I literally started by saying we had this conversation. You guys both do that though. Like sometimes, like things not said, as bad as no, he no, does. not no. I think it, it, it crossed you, my you mind just now. Like, do. is that what they were talking about? But we're like, I'll say something, and then Fran, like five minutes, ten minutes later, says the same exact thing I just said. I'm like, I just said that. It's like she just didn't hear it at all. Yeah. You just did that. <laughs> I do it on on the podcast though. She just yeah. does that in like normal life. <laughs> Anyways, anyway. back to what I was saying about the Southern Charm guys. Anyway. Uh, they love them, love them, but they really think who they are. But I do love them, but they really think who I they mean, are. I mean, this that was an absolutely insane statement. We're even not if as he, close with Shep, though. Even, I don't, no, I, even if he wants to say strip away the celebrity, like if they were just regular folk on the street, but then it's also like, well, then Shep has to strip away his celebrity also. Right, so let's, so let's really think about this one because... What are we doing? <laughs> what, it was just, what are we doing? It was just a bold statement. Just bold, bold statement. Bold statement. And he got uh not only on not only on Instagram since that was just reposted, but I think he even on even on Twitter it has uh it has three hundred and forty five replies and eighty Quote, 70, 80, it says like 80 retweets, 10 are retweets, 70 quote tweets. Hey, <laughs> engagement. It's, it's all about an engagement. engagement. Speaking of Southern Charm, guys, Definitely look engagement. forward to an announcement this week. I've been making sure that I'm taking my vitamins as frequently as I remember and as possible lately, and Care Of is great for that. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high-quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. If you're like me and you're on TikTok and you've been seeing this vitamin works for this and this vitamin works for that and you're really not sure which one you should be taking, Care Of is perfect for that because you could fill out a little quiz and what your concerns are and then they will decide which vitamins are right for you and curate it in a little cute package for yourself with your name on it that you can take them every day and it's easy to remember. It's easy to pack with you if you're traveling somewhere. Easy to go vitamins. It's the perfect time to reset and think about the little changes you can make in your daily routine with some vitamins or supplements or whatever it is that you're looking to best suit your health and what you want to improve in your life. Each shipment comes with a customized booklet showing you exactly what in your individual daily packs and why it was recommended specifically for you and your health goals. For 50% off your first care of order, go to Take Care of 
dot com and enter code CITO50. Once again, that's code CITO50 at takecareof.com. Okay, unless anything crazy happens, you know, in the next few weeks, which I feel like this has kind of wrapped itself up. I don't know what Ticketmaster is going to do, but Taylor put out a statement. Ticketmaster tried to explain themselves. It just clearly did not go down the way that they wanted to with tickets and Taylor's said as much as she probably can I would think a lot of people also talking about like the AMAs um a lot of people are saying she didn't participate in any carpet stuff also because of that it's like people asking her questions yelling things she can't answer fraud she posted Coward. whoa whoa guys we're kidding she posted on I'm her not. story he's not <laughs> she posted it she posted on her story and she said well, it goes without saying that I'm extremely protective of my fans. We've been doing this for decades together, and over the years, I've brought so many elements of my career in how uh, in house. I've done this specifically to improve the quality of my fans' experience by doing it myself with my team, who care as much about my fans as I do. It's really difficult for me to trust an outside entity with these relationships and loyalties, and excruciating for me to just watch mistakes happen with no recourse. There are mo- there are a multitude of reasons why people had such a hard time trying to get tickets, and I'm trying to figure out how the situation can be improved moving forward. I'm not going to make excuses for anyone because we asked them multiple times if they could handle this kind of demand, and we were assured they could. It's truly amazing that 2.4 million people got tickets, but it really pisses me off that a lot of them feel like they went through several bear attacks to get them. And to those who didn't get tickets, all I can say is that my hope is to provide more opportunities for us to all get together and sing these songs. Thank you for wanting to be there. You have no idea how much that means. I think that's kind of the most that she can say um, at this point. It was disappointing in a way because you think that maybe she has the power to come over the top, but contracts have been signed. Venues have been locked in. Like, she... Ticketmaster and Live Nation, their combination, you know, they can't, like, she can't have these shows anywhere else. If she's going to do a stadium tours, they all, that's how, that's the only way you can do it all. So, I guess the only way now is future shows. Maybe she does something differently. And we know that uh, the Justice Department is now looking into... Ticketmaster and <laughs> apparently they were doing that already. It's a whole thing. Shout out to She's Kelly Keegs who has been on the forefront. Uh, uh, absolutely. And has forefront. been on the news. Yeah. And she's making waves. She is making with, waves. With her complaints. And which, as let me she tell should. you, she's, she's fighting the good fight. She she is. And um, it is it is very funny. I uh, just seeing people appreciate the battle. I had a, a waitress at a restaurant this weekend be like, Saw your video. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> so <laughs> that is a very, very real sentiment. Yep. But it is, it, it it's crazy. I actually spent a lot of time also reading about what Pearl Jam went through in the 90s when they tried to go against Ticketmaster. And it's just like, even in 1995, they were, they were untouchable. That's 15 years before they merge with live nation and have and our big ticket the well the, the the way that they are you know and at that time at that time it was like eddie vetter and pearl jam were pissed that they were charging if the same if not more in fees for tickets the fans were upset they tried to use different venues that didn't have any affiliation with Ticketmaster. it became a whole big thing to like justice department as well and eddie vetter got involved and uh, in Congress and all these crazy, all these crazy things, but Ticketmaster take loyal, lawyered up and uh, <laughs> it didn't actually turn into anything. At now, least Eddie better fought. He did, he did, and well, we don't know what to, you know. Taylor Swift <laughs> might get involved. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not a crazy thought that she would. Taylor Swift has gotten a mo- much more active in recent years politically and putting her actual opinion out there. So I wouldn't be surprised um, if she did get involved in some way of or what happens or if they ask her to make a statement or something because even in her even in her statement she clearly made it obvious while she didn't name them by name I'm sure she has shit signed once again that she, her and her team were assured multiple times that Ticketmaster would be able to handle 
everything and they just weren't which is why i was saying like they have no problem giving artists these promises and not fulfilling them because there's no competition they they're the only ones that can do it anyway so they have no problem uh just lying about it so it's interesting to see if anything comes out of the investigation like i said Ticketmaster and Live Nation have been together since 2010. The last time they were looked at was before that. So maybe there is is something there. Ticketmaster tried to put out this whole long thing of everything that happened and uh, like explain their side of things. They said that uh, only 72,000, I think they said, uh, tickets are on secondary sites. Am I making up that number? I thought I saw that, but maybe not. I thought it was something that they wrote like historically they've been able to manage uh, huge volumes coming into the site, but this time the staggering number of bot attacks as well as fans who didn't have codes drove unprecedented traffic on their site. It's just like then how do you how do you not have plans for the bots for the biggest tour that's happened in forever? It's insane. So. At this point, I don't even think there's like any tickets left. Over 2 million tickets were sold on Ticketmaster. All 2 million tickets from the verified fan on sale were sold to verified fans. 2.4 million tickets have been sold for the tour overall. Um, less than 5% of the tickets for the tour have been sold or posted for resale on the secondary market. Uh, that's the number that they gave. And I thought like since they just canceled the regular tour I mean regular tour regular sale they didn't really make it clear of like there were tickets left they just didn't have enough they claimed like the the phrasing they used was insufficient remaining ticket inventory to meet the demand so it's like are there tickets left or did you or are they all gone and what are you doing with the rest of the tickets so still some unanswered questions <laughs> nothing I know I just talked for I'm quite just some time. following along. Yeah. I understand the frustration and I hope it gets figured out for everybody. I hope that she changes what she does for tickets in the future. I don't think unfortunately I don't think at this point she can do anything for her. But this I do tour. think when it gets closer to the dates of the tour, people will be able to get tickets. Yeah, I mean of course people are gonna put their tickets on sale. Like that's oh that's happens of always. Um, but as of right now, the, like I said last week, the resale situation is insane. So I would definitely see what happens in the coming weeks, first months since this doesn't start till March. So crazy, crazy journey with Taylor Swift in this tour. And I hope going forward, she just never uses them again. She probably will. She might, she might not. She might create her whole, her whole system. That you would be great, know. but I think it's probably the easiest for them. In which they do care about their fans, and Taylor Swift does care about her fans, but also they they are dough. all yeah. She also cares about the money that she's going to make as well. Yeah, of course. But at the end of the day, like she's even if she did it her like if they also, she probably if she came up with something herself, she would s still make an absolute shit ton of money. It's not like she wouldn't make money doing that. Yeah. I just think that if she did decide to go through Ticketmaster and go through the same process again, um, that would really upset a lot of them. Like, she already upset a lot of her fans. I think she worries a lot about that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something she would consider. Maybe Scooter Braun could set something up for her. <laughs> that's just a joke. <laughs> I'm just trying to get Fran so mad at me. I just don't. I I don't. It's it's just too early to engage with you at this point. I'm just. I don't have anything else to say to you. <laughs> I have been loving my Thrive Cosmetics mascara recently. It's my favorite. I use it all the time. Thrive Thrive Cosmetics makes high performance beauty and skincare products made with clean skin loving ingredients. The Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. I've been using this mascara for years. Uh, I think it is one of the best ones. It is the first vegan tubing mascara. It's one of their best-selling products. It lasts all day without clumping, smudging, or flaking. Then one of my favorite parts of this mascara is it also has really easy removal. 
The tubing floor formula slides right off with warm water and a washcloth so you don't have to be scrubbing at your eyes to try and get your mascara off. They also have a sheer strength hydrating lip tint that deeply hydrates lips with a hint of tint that applies evenly and lasts. It glides on smoothly for even color that's comfortable to wear all day and it comes in six shades. Um, the mascara is my number one thing. If you guys are going to try Thrive, try the mascara. I think you'll love it. It really is. It stands on its own. It gives like great volume and length. Thrive also has their bigger than beauty mission for every product purchase. Thrive Cosmetics donates to help communities thrive. So celebrate the season of giving and try Thrive Cosmetics today. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash chicks. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash chicks for 15% off your first order. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another game of Beat Rhea and Fran. This is game 56, and we are joined by the lovely Abby and Shannon. Oh, my God, we are really getting up there with the amount of games. A lot, a lot of, of questions games. have been asked. A lot of answers have been given. A lot of wrong answers have been given. But today, we're excited to play another game of trivia. You kind of have like, your hosting voice on. I do. I felt like we needed a little oomph. So welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I wonder how many. Like, I'd love to know. I that how would many be total a, questions. Yeah, like that would be a really you, hard. No, no, not even how many total questions. Like our record. Oh, your record of like no. how many questions we've gotten right and wrong. Oh. Would be really hard be, to figure out. Be. We have to go all the way back to the first game. I if think. anyone wants to do that. We'll send you some merch or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll set up. <laughs> Go some, back we'll and listen to every single game. Some incentive because I, I'm actually interested to know. It would be cool to have like record, stats. Yeah, what our record is like. Who do you think's got more questions right between the two? Of we'd you? have to know. We'd probably have to get Fran. some Jeff D. No, I, I kind of think it's probably it close be, to even. It would be hard to tell because you guys sometimes work together. Yeah, yeah. It would well, be hard. We to are tell. a team. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we get a half point for when yeah. we're when we collaborate. Um, okay, ladies, fifteen rounds of questions. If you get a question wrong, the other team can steal. Uh, whoever's the most points at the end wins. Who, to determine who goes first, Noah's going to give us a movie. We're going to guess the Rotten Tomato score, alternate guesses. Whoever is closest will get to go first. So Noah, what is today's movie? Today's movie is Holiday. Holiday, that's the one with um, Emma, Emma Roberts, Roberts and, and Luke Bracey. Yes. Okay. I did, and the Thanksgiving I did game. enjoy that movie. It was kind of a Christmas movie, no? Yeah, but I searched up Thanksgiving movies and it came up. There's like no Thanksgiving movies. There's like a Friendsgiving. And I was like, no one's probably seen that. Mm, yeah. They don't really make a lot of movies I was like, I thought I, it crossed my mind to do an entire Thanksgiving movie. But there's just not. I feel like there's a lot of movies where Thanksgiving is included, but it's not a Thanksgiving movie. Yeah. Nothing's like centered around Thanksgiving. Yeah. No. Okay. All right, Holiday. ladies, would you like yeah. to take a guess? You go first, Abby. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, well, I've never seen it, so I feel like it's not, <laughs> I don't know if it's a classic or not. I would go, I'm going to go middle of the row. Let's go 62. I'm giving it a 13%. Oh, my lord. I think it was a little bit better than that. <laughs> I uh, I mean, Couples Retreat, I think, is an awesome movie. Low <laughs> uh, 39. I'm going to go... Forty-four. Forty-four. Wow. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's a good start <laughs> to the game. That is a good start. Even I'm blown away. Forty-four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So question number one to Rian and Fran. Shout out Maddie from St. Louis, Missouri. In Jersey Shore, Ronnie makes the family his famous drink. What is it called? Ron Ron Juice. That's my answer. Yeah. Final answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> All right. One nothing, Rhea and Fran. Also, Abby and Shannon have a lot in common with Rhea, right? Pharmacy. Shannon, yeah, I, I went to Catholic school. I was a pharmacy technician. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh my we lived the same life. Yeah. yeah. Did you love being Para a pharmacy tech or Parallel no? lives. Well, yeah. 
I guess so, because I'm a pharmacist now. <laughs> really? Oh my yeah. gosh. See, I almost I almost took that step. I, I was like, if this if my world of entertainment doesn't work out for me, maybe I'll just be a pharmacist because I liked it a lot. So great. Good for you. Good, good days and bad days, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, question number two to Abby and Shannon. Shout out Eileen from Long Island. List the following actors in order from youngest to oldest. Miles Teller, Ryan Gosling, Liam Hemsworth, Dave Franco. From oldest to youngest? Youngest to oldest. I feel like... I feel like Liam and Dave Franco are up there. Are, are younger or older? Older. Older. I feel like Ryan Gosling might be older. I feel like Miles Teller's the youngest. Is the youngest? Okay. Yeah. Like, Ten I, my first thought was Miles, Liam, Dave, Ryan. Move with that. All right. So youngest, oldest, Miles Teller, Liam Hemsworth, Dave Franco, Ryan Gosling. Incorrect. I feel like Liam Guys, Hemsworth Liam is youngest? younger than Miles Teller. I kind of think so, too. I would go Liam Hemsworth, Miles, Miles Teller, Dave, Dave Franco, Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I right. agree. I, I feel the same way. Let's go Liam Hemsworth. Miles Teller, Dave Franco, Ryan Gosling. Correct. Nice. Oh my God. Nice. Oh my God. We never I can't take those, it. I, I never get those it. ones right. <laughs> uh, Liam Hemsworth is 32. Miles Teller is 35. Dave Franco is 37. Ryan Gosling just turned 42. Miles Teller is 35, huh? Why would you think just, younger? I would have clocked him at like 33. Yeah, not yeah. that much of a difference. No, no, it's not. I just. <laughs> He's got like a baby face. Yeah, he bit. does. He does. He definitely does. I thought maybe a little bit younger. <clears throat> he looked way younger in Top Gun. Like if you see him now, like at the Phillies game, he he look he he looks older. Damn, it's the makeup. Yeah, <laughs> or, he's got, or just like just you get, aged rapidly no, in the last you just, six you just months. Get in shape for certain roles, I think. Like. Yeah. Okay. Two nothing, Rand Fran. This question is to them. Shout out Piper from Phoenix. Where does the term "stan" originate from? That's a great question. <laughs> oh, Eminem yeah. song, Stan. Is that where it, really where it came from? I'm gonna the go term? with I'm gonna go with Sure, it. yeah. I like that answer. There you go. Yes. Eminem. Correct. That wow. is yeah, that is where it Because really he says where it from came your from? biggest fan, yeah. Stan. Yeah, but like like right after like everyone from started using biggest that as like fan, a thing. Stan. Yeah. Like that's just like, like that his, was like his name? Yeah. Yeah, like in the if you're seeing the, the music song, video, in the music it's a video. crazy music video. Crazy wow. dark music video. Yeah. Great song. If also you're, with Elton John. Yeah. If you're driving and you just need you just want to really focus in on a song that's like a movie in your head, great yeah. song. I really yeah. did not know that. Yeah. Like I really yeah. had absolutely no idea that that's where it's from. Yeah. Okay. Three nothing. Re and Fran. Wow. All three so far. Yeah, I don't wow. <laughs> I don't see that often. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Question number four to Abby and Shannon. Shout out Caroline from Chicago. What do the Jonas Brothers say is overrated in the song SOS? Hugs. Right? I think so, yeah. Hugs, final answer. Correct. Yes. Hugs are <laughs> that one. That's a lyric question that I did not. <laughs> wow, look at this. Not one wrong. Yeah, we're we're so on far. fire. Oh my god. Dang. Okay, question number five to Rian Fran. Shout out Addy from Mass. Who is not an SNL five timer? A Justin Timberlake. B Tina Fey. C Chris Rock. D Scarlett Johansson. Justin Timberlake definitely is. I would assume Tina Fey is, but I don't know. That could be a trick. Scarlett Johansson feels random, so I feel like she's been on it five times. Chris Rock feels Good like he seconds. did. Yeah. I'm good. Let's go Tina Fey. Do you think it's a trick? Yeah, because like she she's was on the show so many times. Like five she was seconds. on the show. How many times did she host? Right. Let's go Tina Fey. Yeah, yeah. Finally. Mm. He was thought, so excited. I thought we talked I thought we talked ourselves into right, that one. Yeah. So Abby and Shannon. Can we get the, the choices again? Yeah. A, Justin Timberlake. B, Tina Fey. C, Chris Rock. D, Scarlett Johansson. I'm between Scarlett Johansson and Chris Rock. Agreed. Like, 
Chris Rock. Chris Rock seems like he would host more times than Scarlett Johansson. Has it, have they both been like on the show? Neither of them, I don't think, have been on the show, right? Let's go with Scarlett Johansson. All right, Scarlett Johansson. All right. Scarlett Johansson. Incorrect. It's Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Ah. See, ah. see, we talked ourselves into the wrong trick. Justin Timberlake, five. Tina Fey, six. Scarlett Johansson, six. Chris Rock's been three. Mm, see, Ooh. we were on the right track because we thought it was going to be a trick. Honestly, impressive. Scarlett Johansson's done it six times. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, question number six to Abby and Shannon. Shout out. Rachel from Orlando, it's still 3-1, Rian Fran. Which actor or actress did not play a role in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? A, Sydney Sweeney, B, Emma Roberts, C, Austin Butler, D, Lena Dunham. I honestly have never seen that movie, so, but I've heard a lot about it. Sydney Robert- Sweeney and Austin Butler are definitely in the movie. Yeah, I first and guessed Emma Roberts. Emma- Emma Roberts and Lena Dunham. I don't know. They like are on like this like culty ranch. I feel like they both look like they could be characters. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds. Um, I just mm, I I feel like it might be Lena Dunham. I think Emma Roberts might be in it. Time is up. Know. Uh, Lena Dunham. Incorrect. It's Emma Roberts. What, what were the? Wow. It's definitely Emma Roberts. I've seen this movie five times. <laughs> I know. I just I wanted to see Sydney Sweeney, them. Emma Roberts, Austin Butler, Lena Dunham. Yeah. Yes. I, I, yeah. She's right. I know I'm right. <laughs> She's right. I just Four. I just I didn't hear the first one. Four one. Rian Fran. Dang. I went to see that movie three times in theaters. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a long movie. <laughs> I know. It is a long movie. Okay. Uh, did you see I that? Really liked did you the see that of- <laughs> today? Quentin Tarantino is directing a TV show. Like oh, a limited series. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Question number seven to Rian Fran. Shout out Michelle from Ontario, Canada. What was the name of the character Drake played on Degrassi? Uh, Jimmy. Full name. Jimmy, Jimmy Brooks. Jimmy. Jimmy Brooks? Jimmy Brooks. Yeah. Final answer. Correct. And that's why he made a song Jimmy Cooks with 21 mm. Savage. I didn't know that <laughs> until I did this question. <laughs> I didn't know that either until just now. Okay, five one. Was that a new one of the new ones? Uh, it came out on the last album. Oh. Yeah. The one before the last yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Five one Rand Fran. And this is to Abby and Shannon. Shout out Grace from Philly. In the show Only Murders in the Building, Steve Martin's character stars in a detective TV show. What was the name of his character on this show? I I didn't watch it. I was gonna say I don't think either of us watched that. <laughs> what was what was the question one more time? What was the character's name? Yeah, the character that he played in the show. What is the name of the that? show within the show? Yeah, the show within the show. Oh. I got nothing. De- Detective Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> is it Brando? <laughs> no, it's it's Br- Br- Bravos. Bra- Brazos? Brazos. Brazos? Brazos. 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 Sounds right. Brazos. Brazos. Final yeah. yeah. Correct. Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> I, I was playing in my head like Brazos, Brandos, <laughs> Bravos, one of those. Six, one. Rian Fran. <laughs> uh, this is question number nine. Shout out Ashley from Pittsburgh. This is a Rian Fran. Two different actors played Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter movie franchise. Name the two actors. Uh, Richard Harris and Sir Ian McKellen. Final answer. Shit, is it maybe Ian McKellen? Yes. Don't second guess yourself. Go with your gut. No, it's not Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen is... Ten seconds. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with. I think I'm wrong though. Wait, say it again. Richard Harris and Ian McKellen. Incorrect. Yeah, that's, uh, Ian McKellen is. I'm thinking he's Marvel. <laughs> so Abby and Shane. R- Richard Harris and Michael Gambon. Yeah, Gandalf. <laughs> Final answer. Correct. That's what it is. This is a good game. Why was I thinking? 
He's a gift. Ian McKellen's Gandalf. He, yes. 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 All right. Question number 10. The score is 6 2, Rian Fran. This question is to Abby and Shannon. I'm going to play a movie clip and you tell me what movie it's from. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Why not? Because I don't um, want one. Come on. <laughs> I don't believe that. You don't believe that a woman could enjoy being free and independent? Are you a lesbian? No, I'm not a lesbian. I'm just not comfortable being someone's girlfriend. That kind of sounded like Scarlett Johansson. I couldn't place either of them, really. Um. Or I thought it kind of sounded like a little bit like Margot Robbie. But I don't know what movie she's in where she'd say that. Um. Could you place the guy? No. Uh-uh. What's up? Time is okay. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Incorrect. I and none of this rings Can you play it again? Me. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Why not? Because I don't, um, want one. Come on. <laughs> I don't believe that. You don't believe that a woman could enjoy being free and independent? Are you a lesbian? No, I'm not a lesbian. I'm just not comfortable being someone's girlfriend. any bells for me. Five cents. Is it... Is that Zoe Deschanel? All right, time is... I got nothing. Nothing? Yeah. It is Zoe Deschanel. Mm. 500 days of Fuck! Summer. I was gonna uh, say I that! I <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. When Zoe Deschanel came to me, I was gonna say, should I just throw out 500 days of summer? Damn. Damn it! Great movie. Okay. Still 6-2, Rian Fran. This is question number 11 to them. Shout out Rachel from Orlando. Name the three leads from the 2006 movie Aquamarine. Um, oh, Emma Paxton. Roberts, JoJo, and Sarah Paxton. Final answer. Yes. yes. Correct. Great movie. All right. 7-2, Rian and Fran. This is question number 12 to Abby and Shannon. Uh, shout out Sam from Sterling, Ontario. In Mean Girls, what song does Damien sing at the Christmas concert? <laughs> oh my god, what is that song called? Can you sing a little bit of it? <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes, don't look at me. And then it's like, uh, oh my gosh, what's that song called? It's Christina Aguilera. Um, and, oh, shoot. Um, is it called Beautiful? Yes, and it's not You Are Beautiful. You are beautiful. Yeah. Words. <laughs> is it oh. Beautiful by Christina Aguilera? Correct. Yes. <laughs> you are beautiful. Which I, I, when I was researching this, I didn't realize that she didn't write that song. But Linda Perry did. But it's not, oh, better it's not known a, as a Christina Aguilera. It's not shocking. Yeah. For, well, I thought that she wrote her songs. Christina Aguilar. A lot of people don't I, write their No, songs. I know a lot of people don't. That, I just like, assume that, that she did That era of pop star, not as much. Yeah. Okay, 7-3, Rian Fran. This is question number 13 to them. Shout out Shannon from Pittsburgh. In Ted Lasso, what animal does Ted tell Sam is the happiest animal in the world and why? Mm, I've only seen the first season of Ted Lasso. And maybe it's from that, but I watched that years ago. Animal. I don't know. For some reason, I want to say otter. Seconds. I want to say otter. <laughs> say otter. <laughs> Which I'm just gonna go with otter. Incorrect. And I need a reason. <laughs> oh, <laughs> an animal and a reason. Yeah. Do you know Abby? No, I'm trying to think. I think I don't think it's from season one. I think it's from season two. Um, I wouldn't know the reason is the issue. I could probably. Could... I don't know. I was thinking like golden retriever. <laughs> or I was thinking like for some reason a cow, <laughs> something like really random. Um, Five seconds. 
I don't know the reasoning to the thing. Um, I got nothing. Time is up. I would say a golden retriever because they're always happy. <laughs> I don't know. Incorrect. It's a, a goldfish because they have a 10 second memory. Oh. Uh, I, I don't think re- that, that was the first season because I remember seeing that. I don't, re- I don't remember that. Shoot. Yeah. yeah gold, I don't right? recall. And then wasn't he like, be a goldfish? Like, I don't remember. Players. I don't remember I don't it remember. much. Oh, at that all. does sound familiar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, still 7 3, Rian Fran. This is question number 14 to Abby and Shannon. Shout out Lucy C from KC. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, it does. Okay. What song was Selena Gomez's debut single in 2013? Um. 2013 was like you know, over the summer would have been like senior year of high school to like freshman year of college. Yeah, I'm thinking like, is that like the, um, I can think, not tell me you love me, no, that's Demi Lovato, I think. Yeah. Five seconds. Um, and all I can think of is Wizards of Waverly Place. I wouldn't want to be anybody else. Is that what that song's called? Time is I wouldn't want to be anybody else. We'll go with that final answer. <laughs> Incorrect. You said who is says? Who, who says, which is the song yeah. she's thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> or is it ah. A Year Without Rain? Oh, did that come out before? Because that was on Wizards. I'll never forget. That was so 2013 was... <laughs> so maybe that was... I was track. in high school. Okay, so maybe it is Who Says. Let's, I feel like who says would make sense. Let's go who says. Yeah. Incorrect. Uh, it's come and get it. Oh. Uh, if you're when you're ready, come and get it. Not. <laughs> Darn. Okay. I do love A Year Without Rain. That was a great That's song. song. Final question. This is to Re and Fran. They're up 7-3. Shout out Sierra from York, Pennsylvania. In the sweet life of Zach and Cody, what is the name of the Tipton employee that has a crush on Zach and Cody's mom? Irwin. Oh, it's the janitor, right? Isn't his name Irwin? Yeah, yeah I think so. You said no, it's the no, janitor. No, 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 I, no, no, I meant it. I didn't mean to say no, it's the janitor. It's like, that's the janitor, right? I know, I. it's the janitor as a crush, but is his name Irwin? Yeah. I'm just, I feel like I'm picturing his Let's go thing Irwin. on his, on his, ja- on his set suit. Or, 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 Irwin? Arwin. 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 Erwin, Arwin, Arwin, Arwin. Correct. <laughs> Damn, I was so close to saying incorrect. <laughs> I was like, it's it's Erwin, but it's not. I, I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. an A. That's why. That's Arwin. why I was saying picture yeah, yeah, yeah. picture the yeah yeah the full what mm-hmm. are they called like the onesie thing that yeah. he wears jumpsuit jumpsuit, jumpsuit. jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. yes thank you. <laughs> Okay, final score eight three. Rian Fran, high scoring game. Wow, a a lot of game. good, a lot of points. A lot of yeah. points were made. That's, I feel like that's the most points we've scored in a while. Yeah. Yeah. That one felt good. Thank you guys so much for playing. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It was good vibes after I hit the Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. And thank you guys for taking some time off. Oh yes, yes. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for playing. And if you could email Noah your um, an, a- an address and your sizes, we'd love to send you guys some merch. And thank you for playing with us. Awesome. Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. So yeah. nice meeting you. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. We have an awesome interview with Glenn Powell. He is back. If you guys remember, he was on this show years ago, so it's great to have him back. But first, before we get into that, guys, the holidays are on their way, and so are the festivities that come along with them. But in between the shindigs and socializing, it's important to pause and make time for the little moments, too. So take a second or two to chill this holiday season with Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. And right now, you can enter for a chance to win a Coors Light Chill Holiday Kit. Stay tuned for details on how to enter. You can take a break from the holiday hustle with Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. As always, that's when you guys know it's time to chill. So when you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light mountain cold refreshment made to chill. You guys know it. Coors Light is my beer for those Sundays where I am relaxing, watching football, and having some me time. So make time to chill this holiday season and reach for the beer that's made to chill. And go to CoorsLight.com slash chicks for your chance to win an exclusive chill holiday kit complete with sweatsuit, beanie, socks, 
and gift cards. No purchase necessary. It ends 1 2 23 at 11 59 59 p.m. CT. Must be legal resident of the 50 USDC, 21 years of age or older. Void where prohibited. See official rules at believeinchill.com for entry instructions, odds, prizes, restrictions, etc. And always celebrate responsibly from Coors Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado. Hi, Hi. how are you? I, I haven't seen you girls in forever. It's been I know. so long. A lot has changed for both of us, I feel. Uh, like you guys are kicking ass. I'm so proud of you. Thank I you. Feel like I feel like when we talked last, um, you guys were like kind of at the early stages of this whole thing. We yeah. were, and now like a, a like a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. We're Thanks. proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> goes goes both so, ways. Yeah. <laughs> you, I think, were w- w- just one like, of our first guests. I would. Yeah. Round. It was. It was. Yeah. It was very early on for radio. I yeah. think you were promoting Set It Up. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, weirdly, the movie that um, is coming out in a week and a half, I was shooting Set It Up when I drove to Massachusetts to get the rights to this book. Wow. It's a like, long time coming. <laughs> long, yeah. No, this this is taking a damn long time <laughs> to put together. Um, but, yeah, it's crazy because, yeah, you guys have gone on a whole, a whole thing yeah. since then. So, Thank you. Well, let's start. We can talk about it. Yeah, let's do it. During the interview. All right, everyone. We are here with a very special guest. We are joined by the lovely Glenn Powell, who actually has been on our show before for those new listeners out there. Maybe they didn't catch it very early in the beginning. We were just catching up. Glenn was one of our first guests in those early radio days. And now he's back. So welcome back. We're so excited to catch up. Pumped to be here. Yeah, we were in a an old radio studio in our old office. Mm-hmm. N- new new office, new studio. Moving on. It looks up. very very different. Yeah, you guys got like somebody a professional came in and decorated this one. When I think we were at a conference table. Yes. And, yep. You know, <laughs> by the way, my dad. You know, coming into the barstool offices, my dad. Um, the the swag that you guys gave uh, him, he reps it almost every day. All of his <laughs> so it's it's uh, I love yeah, it was that. a trip that paid off. For the we're whole gonna family. have to get him some new stuff now. Yeah, definitely. We'll yeah. we'll we'll send some we'll send some new gear for him. But we're so excited to have you back. Uh, we're here to talk about devotion. It's out uh, November twenty third. It looks phenomenal. You were just telling us a little bit about the journey you've been on to, to make this movie and everything that's happened. It's been years now. So how are you feeling that we're so close to the release date? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I think it's like been like, it's like five, five years or something. Like when, when I shot set it up in New York, um, on Memorial day, when I was shooting set it up with Zoe Deutsch in, in New York, I took the weekend to go meet with the Hudner family in Concord, Massachusetts, to basically get the life rights to Tom Hudner and get the rights to the book. Um, and so that was like years ago. That was the beginning of y'all's uh, show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it just feels like a lifetime ago, but it's, it, these things take a long time to put together. And now this is a, uh, you know, big movie that the world's going to get to see, but it kind of just started off with a handshake in Massachusetts uh, a long time ago. But yeah, it's a really special movie that, um, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, after making Top Gun, you know, and, and kind of like figuring out how to make a, a war epic in a new and fresh way. This one's like a different era with different characters, but it's and it's a totally different animal, but it's really good. I'm really proud of it. which which one did you know you were making first? Because obviously these are coming out close enough where it's like, oh, yeah. he's a pilot. He's he's a pilot. Yeah. He's, he's like, <laughs> Glenn is officially a pilot now. It's happening. Um, so which, you know, you're talking about way 2017. Which movie were you, did you know you were definitely making first? Yeah, so I, uh, Devotion had a script. We had, um, we had a script and basically financing before Top Gun. And I basically had to ask Cruz, Tom Cruise, if uh, if Tom I could do Cruise. both, um, <laughs> I, I remember the moment. I remember feeling kind of like, oh God, I hope he says yes because I because I wanted to do both, and I had to ask the producers of Devotion that they'd spent money and developed this whole thing for me, and then Cruise, who was basically saying, hey, I want you to do Top Gun, and the fact that I got to do both, obviously, it's very confusing for the world that they're like, hey, this guy can't stay out of a plane. <laughs> 
but 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 devotion that journey actually started before top gun right and you're an executive producer for devotion and it seems like you've had your hands on this the entire making of the film what what's that been like to just be you know because I'm sure for Top Gun, you know, you, you have your part, but there's all these other people working on it. But for Devotion, you seem to have been there right from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. I had to find the book, um, find the producers, you know, director, stars, assemble um, all these different airplanes from around the world, from different eras to, you know, build a carrier in the middle of Georgia. You know, it's just like there was a lot that that went into this one. And I definitely had my hand you know, hands on this one in a different way. Um, and it's just, it's been, um, it's been really satisfying, but also getting the families together. That's the other thing is like, you have to, when you make a movie about real people, you have like real pressure from yeah. two sides and they were all very, you know, the Brown family wants to do Jesse's story correctly. And the Hudner family wants to do his story correctly and really making sure that everybody feels like it's accurate and honoring of both, both men is, is very, it's very interesting. Um, but I'm really, I mean, this is, I don't think I've ever made anything with such heart before that I felt such pressure going into a process. Like I was actually, my, my, my girlfriend was like, are you always this stressed out while making a movie? And I was like, no, I'm not usually this stressed out. Like I always care, but to on this one, I felt like I, I was having to give like the obituary of both of these men in front of the whole world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was just like a different level of, just a different level of pressure and also to pull off putting real actors in these planes we did it on top gun with these f-18s but to put actors in in 70 year old airplanes that are not run by the navy but are run by collectors like there's a there's a there's a helicopter we fly in this movie that is so old that we had to get a piece from the smithsonian wow um you know so it's just a, it's a different when you're flying these old planes aggressively like it just feels like things can go a little more wrong than it did on top absolutely yeah, yeah definitely and, uh, <laughs> it's like that's yeah. a that's a scary thought that is and yeah. i think yeah as um as viewers you watch the war movies and you think like how are they doing this like how do they mm -hmm. how are these how are these planes even like in the air it's just um it, it it's crazy and i i know you said you wanted to do the the family's justice and i think that so many war movies it's such a great story because you don't um necessarily always know the stories of these people but they have such incredible stories and you watch the movie and you think oh my god how are how did more people not talk about this and how is this not a a bigger recognized thing so i think devotion is going to be one of those that makes people look up these guys stories and go back and read the books and understand what was going on but you guys have jonathan majors in this role of uh jesse brown and he's fantastic everybody is raving about how amazing the two of you are are in this movie jonathan told a story on kimmel of uh you pitching him the movie in a russian turkish bathhouse in the nude <laughs> completely naked what is your side of that story uh uh my side of the story um it was really it was really interesting because my um one of the producers hit me up and said uh because i was the one who was like okay this is the guy like yeah. I, w let's go after majors for this um because it's a really it's a really it's a hard it's a hard role to pull off and you need someone who's just like ready ready to pull it all in to pull this thing off and make it different so i was like let's go after majors and he's like okay he's in new york I was like, cool, I'll fly to New York. I'll go meet with him. And they go, uh, he's insisting on meeting at a Russian bathhouse. And I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. And they were like, is that cool with you? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. And I was like, yeah, I love to sweat, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it was really interesting because within about 30 seconds of like, we like, oh, hey, what's up, man? Glenn, cool. Like, all right, here's your, here's your key. Here's your locker. I was literally like, oh, um, oh, I guess, I guess we're, we're doing this. Um, and so it was, um, yeah, we, we, I guess, I guess we saw each other naked within like a minute of, of meeting <laughs> each other, um, which is cool. Um, Immediately and, uh, close. You know, maybe that helped the chemistry yeah. for you guys on, right. on screen. You felt you know? comfortable. Sure does. Sure does. You know, <laughs> friendships, friendships are built on trust, yep. honesty, and now, you know, what's more honest than yeah. a couple buddies naked in a bathhouse <laughs> yep. talking to, you Just know. talking shop. 
Just talking you, shop. Eye contact. Yeah. All about eye contact. <laughs> Were you guys in a bath? When the oh, no, sa- oh, no, 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 like sorry. the saunas. No, no, because yeah, I, like a, yeah, because saunas, but they have baths. Like, they do. They I've yeah. been to a bathhouse before. They do have uh, the pools, the tubs. Maybe bath is the wrong word. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up your fantasy here or clarify too <laughs> much. But we were not in a bathtub. It's like <laughs> it's like a uh, two men in a bathtub talking movies is a very different experience. Um, I don't know what that movie is, yeah. but, but but the uh, no, it's like it's like a, one of those really intense. Sauna, sweat, cold plunge, sort of situation. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. pools, the, yeah. The, the cold plunge pools. Yes, yeah, yeah. How um, how he's it, still confused. What yes, I'm yes, no, about. You, no, he knows. <laughs> what? Um, like, yeah. Nope. <laughs> that's what everybody does these days. Like everybody, they're it's supposed to be very good for you. You sit in the sauna, you go yeah. in the ice a bath. A lot of the guys here the like go to the bathhouse together. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the same one. It might, it must be. There's like, there's one really <laughs> well known one downtown. Yeah. I think that people go to. I. That's my guess. Mm-hmm. We, <laughs> he's acting yeah. like he's yeah. not. Familiar we won't. With we that. won't know. Anyway, um, as far as casting goes, so you know, you're you're reaching out to Jonathan. You guys want him to be in this movie. How involved were you in the other characters? Because from social media and whatnot, it seems like you guys had a pretty good kind of bro squad going on of of all all the guys together. <laughs> The, the the bromance uh the bromance quotient in this movie is is uh was unbelievable because we <laughs> you know because joe jonas i've known joe for for forever you know spencer neville nick hargrove darren kagasoff you know these guys thomas sadowski we just had a damn good time um down there making this movie so um also during covid it's like the height of covid so it's like you're in a bubble like all you can do is make a movie and kind of uh play mafia you know joe joe and sophie would host mafia nights at their house we'd play golf with all the boys um thomas's uh wife is uh is amanda safe seafried so she was down there you know it was it was we had a solid a good crew crew down there uh in savannah georgia um but really the social chair was joe jonas i mean he kept everybody together and um he likes to have a good time joe's joe's a wild man joe and sophie just seem so cool they're the best. I mean, you know, and it's like also they're they're just one of a kind. They're like the most fun people that create experiences everywhere. Like, that's amazing. and they're rowdy. Like, that's the other thing. It's <laughs> yeah. Like, they're the most fun. Like, I've been friends with Nick for a long time. Nick and Pre are different. They're they're like they, they also host. They also throw parties. But like Joe and Sophie are like the rowdy the rowdy turn up to eleven version mm-hmm. for sure. They uh. Um, I just I spent three them. nights in. I just spent three nights in Vegas at all their Jonas at all the Jonas Brothers shows. So, <laughs> I, uh, as a fan, it does seem that way. Um, <laughs> Sophie was there Thursday night, and Priyanka was there Friday and Saturday. We've we've had some we've had a we've good, had some drinks with Priyanka before. Yeah, we've she had de- some we good know times. she definitely <laughs> likes yeah. to have fun too. Free's fun too. Yeah, yeah. Free's wild she was and fun like, too. let's do tequila shots. We were like, yep, we're in. <laughs> Yeah, you got like those boys really married so well. They did because uh, because because the they all their partners just bring out the best in them and like just watching Joe is always fun, but when he gets around Sophie, he's even more fun, um, which is such a great quality. And Nick's the same way with Pre. It's like mm. I've, I already love those boys, but when they get around their significant others, it's it's nice when a guy's like not pretending like they're they get around their their significant yes. other and they're like. Oh, you're like, okay, I guess they're, we're going to pretend like they're, right. they're not a fun, a mm-hmm. fun time. Mm-hmm. It's like they bring out the best in each other. Yeah. So I just I love that whole crew. That is nice. I love so that. after you guys, you, you all got so close filming and you, you wrap up, bubbles over, got a group chat. How's everyone staying in touch? Now you get to do promo together. You get to see everybody again or, or no in-person promo. No, group chat is very active. Okay, good. Uh, Joe. The funniest thing is, is Joe um, with a couple of the boys is uh, first off, we always go on these golfing trips together. All the, all those boys are everybody's a golfer. So we're um, we go out to Scottsdale and and, uh, and and play here in L.A. But the funny part is, is that Darren, uh, Darren um, Kagasoff in the movie, he went on a trip with Joe. Joe's like, hey, man, do you want to come to I'm playing a concert, I think, in Seattle or something like that. You want to go play some golf and I'll do the concert and we'll fly back. He went on this plane with Joe and didn't come back for like a month. He was on, (laughs) 
he was on the, the tour with the Jonas Brothers. For like, I was like, dude, are you still with them? Like, <laughs> um, so all, all Darren was doing for like a month was just hanging out with the, the Joe bros and, and enjoying That's the like tour. That's like you. That is, I, that is, hey, look, I understand. I was When to they come, went on tour was, and you <laughs> were basically on tour with them. I was supposed to come home from <laughs> Vegas on Saturday in the afternoon. I said, I can't leave yet. I've stayed for another show. So uh, me and Darren, they were, you can't, the you can't leave they the just, shows. They just wrap you in. They, they, they really do. They really do. But uh, this, this movie just, I have a special place in my heart too, I think for war movies, just because it's something that my dad and I have always connected on. He loves them. So funny enough, Nick Jonas is in Midway, which is one that he loves. <laughs> and... Uh, we always watch them together, so he's been so excited about this one. He has sent me the trailers and whatnot. But how much, like, you're making a movie like this, the set. I'm so fascinated with the procedures of how you m make these movies. How many people do you have to make sure that you're getting these aircraft carriers, these planes, everything to look so real? It's, it's hundreds, hundreds of people. Um, this is a big, but I mean, the fact that we made this movie basically independently and it's like bigger than any studio movie ever. I mean, it's a Sony movie now, but it we made this movie. We took a real big gamble uh, making this movie. Um, and I went to like uh, South Korea and went to some of the battlefields where we went and started meeting with a lot of these experts on the Korean War and brought them into this process to make sure that we would make we're building these airplanes correctly and the battlefields that were, you know, the Marines on the ground where it's all frozen and all that stuff like that's accurate. So we brought in every expert on the Korean war from around the world to make sure everything was accurate from head to toe. Um, it takes a, to make a movie of this size. It's like also just it, it to, to turn anything into 1950s, anything. Yeah. It's like a real process. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, so, and we turned Savannah like that, that whole sequence in Cannes, we turned all of downtown Savannah into Cannes, mm -hmm. which is pretty wild. Like it's a monumental effort to get, not only to make it historically accurate, but also the amount of people that have to come to play in order to make it all happen is just wild. So it was pretty surreal to go like a book that I just ended up reading being like, I think this is a movie. And then standing in front of an aircraft carrier that's built to scale in the middle of Savannah is like pretty wild. You're like, right. wow, okay, this is, it's, it's pretty cool to go from an imagined dream to an actual yeah. thing. Pretty you know? insane. It must be incredibly rewarding for the movie to be, yeah. you know, coming out and for everybody to see it. And like Fran said, for people to talk about the story yeah. in which maybe they wouldn't have thought anything about this before. Um, I want to ask if you were expecting any of the outcome that came from Top Gun in terms of like the clips that just kept going insanely viral all over the place and people becoming obsessed with your characters and then of course you get the Halloween costumes like what was the feeling the mustache is back right the mustache coming back what was the feeling seeing everyone's reaction because of course you're doing Top Gun you know the Top Gun is so famous yep. in itself but you don't know what the reaction is going to be to it coming back like I just went to a University of Texas football game uh, on Saturday um, and I was down on the field. Um, and so it's pretty wild when people are like, oh, hang man, hang man. Like that, that, that it's, it's been cool to kind of like see all that stuff. One of my favorite interactions was this girl came up to me. She's like, oh my God, I literally made a TikTok saying this is my future husband. And I was like, oh, okay, okay cool. She shows me this TikTok of like me on the screen. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I was like, do you want a picture? She's like, yeah, sure. And she goes, sorry, what's your name again? And I was like, Glenn. And she goes, she goes, she, I was like, I was like, Glenn. And she goes, that's right, Glenn Eastwood. And I was oh like, Oh my God. <laughs> it was, that's it was, incredible. Uh it was it was a very, a very funny moment. But that's the other thing, is like it, you're doing your job if you're the character is bigger than the actor in in any given way. So um, but it's been amazing. And Miles and I have like jokingly sent each other a lot of like uh funny homoerotic memes about <laughs> yeah. um and uh and and just it's yeah it's been it's been a wild ride it's definitely changed my life i mean when a movie that you get to be one of the leads of you know makes a billion and then some change it, it definitely doesn't hurt yeah uh, so um yeah it's been it's been good i'm just 
but nothing nothing bad on any front like it's just been it's been all fun for the most part to just i'm just enjoying the ride what what is your this might be a silly question but what is your status like with being like a, a actual pilot like could you become an actual pilot are like what what <laughs> now i feel like you've done so much could you fly your own planes do you fly your own planes i, I do i do fly my own okay planes. that's yeah. what i thought I, I, yeah I'm a, I'm a pilot so i've been okay. flying around quite a bit um were you a pilot not, before these movies or after no so after, okay. <laughs> top gun, after top gun uh Cruz gave us uh for christmas pilot pilot license if we wanted it so I took the ground school that and I legal? started taking them up on it. Was it? I said, is that legal? <laughs> Here's your pilot license. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't just like say, oh. hey, get in the plane. Uh, <laughs> you have to train. Yes. I actually feel better about the people that are in the air going through that process. Like you really have to know what you're doing uh, to fly a plane. They don't just hand you the keys. Although I did feel like this, my first solo flight was a little preliminary i was like i, I haven't really been flying that much <laughs> yeah. um but um yeah so cruise for 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 a christmas present gave us all that so i got my license because of him and so i've been flying myself around quite a bit um but yeah uh i just got back from a movie so i didn't get a chance to sh film or um fly while i was down there so i'm about to as soon as I finish this devotion press tour, I'm going to be back up there flying myself around over Christmas. You're hitting what, the skies. What's the furthest distance you've gone? What's the furthest uh, distance you're allowed to go? <laughs> Texas. I, yeah, yeah flown, flown to Texas from California. Mm -hmm. Go back and forth between Texas and LA quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm allowed. I can fly. I just can't fly out of the continental U.S. Okay. okay. Um, I have to get a you know a different rating for that, but. Um, yeah, but yeah, I can fly. If you guys want to fly around, you know, let me know. That I don't. Amazing. I don't particularly like flying, and I don't want to fly into Laguardia, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, you know, we're not that far from Teterboro, so we can. We'll find yeah. you there. That's, <laughs> that's, that's that's probably more our spot. Even we if also we just don't did like a little, flying out know, of Laguardia. <laughs> little five minute trip around the city, we could see see the yeah. skyline. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let, that that'll be that'll be a lot Easy. easier. Yeah. Perfect. That that sounds amazing. You said you just uh, finished wrapping a movie. You did uh, Hitman, right? That's Richard Linklater, yeah. which is incredible. What a, like you know iconic director? How did how did that go? It's so so fun. I mean, Rick, um, Rick and I again we've known each other since I was like fourteen years old. So in this movie, we wrote together and, and produced together, and uh, I play like 12 different characters in this movie. So actually, Jonathan Majors, who's playing Kang in all the Avengers movies, he has to play like an infinite amount of characters. Yes. We, back, we were actually talking shop on how to actually conceivably play all these different characters. So um, Majors and I were are, continue to be wingmen and, and uh, collaborators even after this, but... And I, now I know all the Marvel secrets. He he broke every NDA. <laughs> yeah. So you really have your hands on things behind the scenes more with producing and writing. Do you want? Do you think you want to stay in that area as well as actually acting in the films as well? I think like looking at the people that I really like admire in this business, like people that have managed to keep their hand on the wheel, or at least like. Like uh, even looking at Cruz, you know, looking at Matt Damon, um, Brad Pitt's got a great. Just, I love that he's just Cruz. The That's way it. you Cruise. say it is so cool. so casual. Like it's just like you know, he's just my good pal Cruz. Cruz, uh, <laughs> but it's like it's like it's like all these guys, even Margot Robbie, right? Like you look at these people that they're producing and and making their own stuff. You, there's something that I've always just admired about that, where it's like. Costner told me this on Hidden Figures. He was like, "Your the movies you make are your epitaph. Like after you're, after you're dead, after it's all said and done, the only thing that you know is going to outlive you are the things that you make. You know, and people will continue watching those." And I was like, "There's something kind of wonderful to just going, hey, while you have a a chance to make all the things you want to make, like you might as well, you know, have your hand on the wheel and put those things out there instead of just being a gun for hire." I like being a gun for hire. There's a lot of great stuff coming up that I'm in that's in that category too. Um, but it's it's really nice. It's like there's a different satisfaction, like again, finding the book for devotion and now yeah. seeing it in theaters on Thanksgiving. Like that's that's a really satisfying feeling to kind of see something from start to finish. Right. And why not do both if you can? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I love making movies. So I'd rather, I always just kind of had the mentality of like, I don't like the feeling of having my hand out asking for a job. Like, I feel like there's this desperation in, in Hollywood where everybody's like kind of like the actors, like always just seemed really desperate to me. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just, yeah. Just like put me in anything. That. I don't like that. I, I, don't, I don't like asking for shit. <laughs> What'd you say? Like I said, put me in anything. Like that's like me. I'm like, put me in literally anything. <laughs> give me any, give me any role. I will take anything. Yeah. You know, but that, that there, there's something, there's something about that, um, that feeling of, of desperation in Hollywood that I just never thought was cool. I didn't like that. And I just always thought, Hey, instead of like asking for a job, why don't I provide other people with jobs and like make stuff I actually want to make and try to be the pace setter than rather following somebody else. So Right. And providing um, a job for yourself at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I don't like to be unemployed. It's not my favorite thing. No. <laughs> yeah. It's Especially in LA. There's nothing lower than being unemployed in LA. <laughs> yeah. People forget about you so quickly. I, but I also think a lot of people in LA are yeah, like unemployed. Well. They'll, they'll take what they can get. Yeah. We we just had um we had Zoe Deutsch in here recently. She's amazing. Like she left and Rhea and I were like, that's the coolest girl we ever met. Mm -hmm. Um and I think everybody was hoping you guys were gonna reconnect for another movie. Is that something that is gonna happen? We're, we're still trying to figure it out. I think I think what happened is there was a lot of change in upheaval uh, at the place we were making that movie. Okay. Uh, so, um. Zoe and I are still very committed to getting back on, you know, on set together, especially in a rom-com. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. Um, I don't think it's going to be with that one necessarily. Okay. Um, but we're, we're trying to figure it out. I, I know we're actively, I mean, I love Zoe so much. Like we had the best time making that movie and, uh, she's so damn talented. She literally is the coolest girl. Yeah. She's like, so, so fun. We were, yeah. We, not to, continue to just be creepy but we were like yeah that's she was like the coolest ever <laughs> yeah. we were like that was uh and in studio we were like well that was awesome but yeah. yes okay hopeful that that happens because you guys have uh amazing rom-com chemistry you have like that matthew mcconaughey kate hudson situation where it's like everybody wants them to make those rom-coms and i know he's also a texas guy so i think that the that the chemistry is definitely there so we'll hope I, that happens i actually uh for I just did um, college game day, yeah, uh, and uh, when Texas was playing Bama, and I called McConaughey before uh, I just texted him and was like, "Hey man, I'm about to do college game day. Any tips?" And we talked for like an hour. Uh, it was like one of the most Hollywood moments of my life, where <laughs> I was flying from Toronto for devotion stuff, went to New York for a GQ shoot. And I was on my way to college game day and McConaughey, I literally have a GQ, the GQ people waiting while McConaughey is like, <laughs> I was like, this is the coolest moment of my whole life. <laughs> um, but yeah, <clears throat> I would love to do a movie with Matthew. That would be pretty sweet. That would be awesome. Matthew and Zoe. Maybe yeah. we'll, we'll figure that out. What's, we'll, uh, what's one piece of advice that he gave you? McConaughey? Yeah. Uh, he told me to get, um, He's like, stay in Austin. Um, don't don't plant your roots in L.A. He's like, L.A. Uh, he's like, here's the deal, man. He's like, L.A. is the Matrix, man. He's like, you got you. He was like, that's fake. You know, that's fake area. He's like, you gotta have fun there, but then you unplug in Austin, Texas. That's real life, you know. Um, so that's uh, I'll 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 probably stay in Austin for as long as I possibly can, so I don't go crazy. Because the thing that in in you can go crazy. In LA, just like how we we're talking about being unemployed in LA, mm -hmm. as soon as you have a couple failures, as soon as there's no juice in the engine, and, and as soon as you're not in the cool club, it happens to everybody at one point. Um, the same people that invite you to Christmas don't call you back, you know, and you got to remember, you know, that's why you got to keep your real friends close, your family close, all that stuff. It's yeah. um, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint, and you got to just know who's actually in your corner. Yep, um, definitely. And, and McConaughey just plays the game. He, he He's so zen about everything. Yeah. And let it's me so, tell you, that was spot on. I know. That was that was phenomenal. <laughs> it's like we had him on the interview. Yeah. But <laughs> so you'll keep your Austin roots. But we have to wrap it up. Glenn, thank you so much for joining us. Guys, go see Devotion in theaters on the 23rd. It's a great uh, – have your Thanksgiving. Yes. Have your leftovers. Head to the movie theater. Love after. a Thanksgiving weekend that movie Friday, theater trip. That Friday, your schedule is open. Yeah, go we know see, it is. Go see Devotion. <laughs>
You're the best. And congrats on everything. Just so proud of you guys and, and a huge fan of you guys and continue to be. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. Hopefully congrats we catch to you, you in, as well. Hopefully we catch you in New York next time. We'll we'll take the plane. We'll hop on the plane <laughs> real quick. <laughs> That'd be really fun. Actually. It would. It yeah. would. All right. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. 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 All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Make sure you are subscribing everywhere on YouTube and look out on Instagram, Chicks in the Office Instagram, for an announcement this week. And we love you guys. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. 